checking the kiln this morning, friends. Look at the temperature right there. 149 degrees right there. That's pretty good. We're in the sterilization process right now, which means I'll do 150 degrees for 24 hours and that will sterilize the lumber. All right, guys, if you're not familiar with that term or you're new to the channel, when I talk about sterilizing lumber in this kiln, that means I'm cranking the temperature up to 150 degrees and I hold it there for 24 hours. After 24 hours, I cut the kiln off, I open up two of the vents, and I let the wood kind of cool off on its own for another 24 hours, then the lumber's done. So what that does is, it heats up that wood to 133 degrees. It doesn't matter if you have four quarter, eight quarter, three quarter, it doesn't matter. It heats up that wood to that temperature and that kills any insects, any bug larva, powder post beetles, all the above. Anything inside of that wood that you don't want to be there when you sell it to a woodworker, it's going to kill it. And that's very important because if you're selling wood to woodworkers, a lot of high-end woodworkers mean they're making some really expensive furniture. You don't want those guys calling you back, you know, six or nine months from now and the customer tells them there's sawdust under the table because there's beetles in that wood. And I've heard those stories before. That happens a lot, especially with air-dried stock. Uh, nothing wrong with air-dried stuff, but you got to be careful because you're not sterilizing it. And you want to make sure there's no buds in there, especially if you're selling it or making a project or a commission piece for a customer. Very important. So I hold it there for 24 hours and the lumber's pretty much done. We open up the vents and it vents off. And that's just how we finish up a load here at the kiln at the sawmill. And I've had that going for about 24 hours. It's about 9 a.m. here in the morning. I think about, I think I'll let it go to about lunchtime. Then we'll come out here and cut the kiln off and open up the vents and let that lumber do its thing and cool off on its own, it'll be done. We'll be ready probably by this weekend to load something else up in there. I got a lot of lumber here to drive, about four or 5,000 feet of slabs up there at the mill. So now guys, I'm gonna show y'all something I'm really excited about. And the footage here at the first video showed this log being unloaded last night out of a dump trailer. It's a monster. And if you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen this stuff. If you're not following me on Instagram, you're missing out because I put stuff over there way before it comes to the YouTube channel here. So check this one out. This is going to be a good one. So this right here is a Capalta, and I'm probably butchering the name uh, Catapa. No, Catapa. I can't pronounce that. I'm going to put the spelling right down here let you guys pronounce it for yourself. I think Catapa is the correct spelling for this. But check out this monster right here. My goodness. Got the small end right here. Got the cats up here with us today checking everything out. There's blue. That right there is a massive tree right there. It's an eight foot log. We'll get the measuring tape here in just a second. So this is a hardwood tree. It's extremely rot resistant. It's very similar in its properties to basswood and also butternut because it's kind of soft. And a lot of your wood carvers love this stuff for wood carving, especially Windsor chair makers. They love using this stuff for seats. This log was delivered last night from Kentucky, about three hours from here. And it came out of a backyard of a residential area. I don't see any signs of metal. We should be okay. Uh, both arborists didn't see anything when they cut it down. But my goodness, that is a very, very unique log. And it's also rare to see one that big right there. That is huge for this species. And here's my strategy on this log when it goes on the sawmill here in a few weeks. We'll be sawing this into eight quarter slabs and hopefully they'll be going to Windsor chair makers and uh, wood carvers and people like that. But I may keep one or two for myself. I don't know if I'll ever see another uh, to top of this big again. It's ridiculous the size of it here. We got these trees around here. You see them sometimes. I've never seen uh, nowhere near this big right here, maybe 20 inches at the most. So this log is way too big for the wood miser. I've not measured the diameter just by looking at it. I know the wood miser will not be able to pull off that cut through the throat of it. My wood miser would cut about 34 inches on the width, but you can break down a log bigger than that. So here's my game plan on this. I have an Alaskan chainsaw mill Brand new in the box. I got that high-powered steel chainsaw. I think it's the 880 that runs it. I got a six-foot bar. I've had that stuff for like four years. I bought it about 
You're right at four years ago. It's all new in the box. I've never even taken it out. I've used the chainsaw a few times. So we're finally going to break in the chainsaw mill. We'll put it together and I'll probably come through here and take a cut right down the middle of the heart of this tree and uh, split it in two and then I'll take it to the sawmill. So I'm, I'm not going to chainsaw mill the whole thing. There'll be too much waste right there and there's no sense in that because a lot of this I can saw in the mill. But we'll make our widest cut through the middle which will separate the tree in two equal halves and then we can saw mill it from that point. So that's my strategy here and I'm really looking forward to using that chainsaw mill. I have never used one before and I've had that thing, like I said, for a few years. So uh, this gives me a good excuse to finally get that thing out of the box and get it running. All right, so let's check the diameter here on the small end. Let's pull this thing across. My goodness. 40 inches. It's bigger than I thought it was. Let's check that other direction there. My goodness. Still 40 inches. Down here on the other end. Of course, it swells out. Right here on the sides, you know, once we start sawmilling, we'll be getting rid of this right here. But for measuring purposes, 44 and a half. And a lot of people have been asking where the original mama cat is. And right here she is. She's always with me, just not always on camera. guys it's 8 30 run now daylight but we have a nice nice log here on the sawmill this is a perfect log right here it's perfectly straight there's no taper 22 inches on both ends it's a little proud of eight feet long it's tulip poplar also called popple uh, some people right here call it yellow wood it's a hardwood but extremely soft uh, not really good on rot resistance, although a lot of people use it for siding for barns and cabins. You'll be okay doing that, but make sure you get it off the ground. You know, have about a six inch gap between the end of the board and the ground, and maybe even a seal board running around it, kind of binding the bottom of it there like white oak or something like that, because it will rot on you really fast if it gets a lot of water on it. 
And this right here is really a good saw log because it's a larger log. There should be no juvenile wood in it due to that, which means when we start sawing into this thing, the, the timber should behave. You know, famous last words right there will probably spring up and jump off the mill. But I think we'll be okay. So due to time restraints here, it's going on nine o'clock. I don't want to be out here till 10 o'clock saw and I've got good neighbors and I want to keep them on my side if you know what I mean. So we'll go ahead and crank up the Yanmar and we will square up this log and we'll come up here tomorrow and make probably two by fours out of it. A little bit of out of the woods history here, guys. The first log that I ever sawed on a sawmill was at my buddy Matt's sawmill. He had an LT28 at the time and I sawed yellow poplar all day long. First time I ever ran a sawmill before and he let me run one for the whole job. Good law trust in me actually. I don't think I'll do it for anybody else. But it was a really fun day and I sawed poplar and the sawmill bug bit me and it's been just gnawing at me ever since. I can't get enough guys, can't get enough. So let's get going, we're in now daylight. We'll open this thing up and see what happens. And also to note, now shut up, seven degree 045 double hard wood miser blade and that baby is dull. I'm gonna be going pretty slow on these four cuts right here. We'll put a fresh blade on tomorrow and you will be shocked at how fast I can saw through a poplar with a nice sharp blade. So I'll look over the saw speed guys, I'll try to do the best I can. Guys, it looks like I'm done here. I was hoping to get this thing squared up, but it ain't gonna happen. I got these blade guides on the sawmill. They're called uh, high performance blade guides. And in tomorrow's video, when we really start sawing into this poplar, before we get into it, I'll show you guys those blade guides and what they do. And when they start screaming at you, that means they're doing their job and your blade is either dull or you've hit a rock or something. In this case, it's going dull. So I need to stop sawing. If I keep going, it's gonna start waving on me just a little, possibly even damage the blade. And uh, those are a really good accessory to the sawmills. I really like that. The LT35 didn't have those. I think you can only have them on the LT40 and 50 and 70. Now, I could be wrong about that, but I don't think you put them on the smaller mills. But everything's going good besides that. Uh, cutting really well. Had to go really slow. Everything looks okay. No major knots. Uh, you know, just good poplar guys, good sawing. A good day of sawing poplar is a very good day on a sawmill because it's soft wood. It's a hard wood, but it's soft. And it doesn't kill your off bear when he's stacking it. But I'm my own off bear, so it really don't matter in this case. So I'm gonna scrape this off and take a look at it and uh, call it a night, guys. Appreciate everybody watching. I appreciate everybody on Patreon. And uh, everybody for supporting this channel, it means a lot to me. I'm trying to get some good videos out for you guys and be productive here at the same time, which is pretty hard to do. Terrible tear out. This blade is dull. It's really fuzzy. That's another way to tell that your blade is dull. So I'll shut up now. Thanks for watching. Now oh, that's horrible. Horrible.
clean that up tomorrow with the proper blade. Thank you.